Welcome to the Casuals Guide to UFC 300, Pereira vs. Hill, where I show you filthy casuals why this card is going to be a banger. And this card is absolutely stacked with big names, but more importantly, great matchups. So smash that like button and let's get right into it. In the main event, Alex Botan Pereira defends his light heavyweight title against the former champion Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Alex is 9-2 as a pro and 6-1 and in the UFC so far. Alex Pereira has been on fire since joining the UFC. He would make his UFC debut at middleweight where he would make a great first impression when he would knock out Andreas Michelides in the second round via flying knee. He would follow that up with a solid decision win over Bruno Silva. And he would earn a shot at the title when he would knock out Sean Strickland in the very first round. And Destiny would bring Alex and Izzy together once again, but this time in MMA when Alex would challenge for the middleweight title. And he would deliver when he would TKO Adesanya in the fifth round to become the new middleweight champion. His first defense would be against Adesanya and it would not go his way when he would be knocked out cold in the second round. And this would be the last time we would see Alex at middleweight as he would move up to light heavyweight. And he would make his light heavyweight debut against Jan Wojovic, where he would win a super close split decision. In his latest fight, he would fight Yuri Prohaska for the vacant title. And he would once again capture gold when he would knock out Yuri in the second round when he landed his signature left hook that hurt him. And he would end the fight. He is only 9-2 in MMA and in such a short time has reached the pinnacle of the sport. One thing he has yet to do is successfully defend any of his titles, but at UFC 300, he will have the chance when he takes on Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Jamal Hill is 12-1 with one no contest. He has had an amazing journey himself. He earned his UFC contract on the Contender Series when he would finish Alexander Popik in the second round. He would follow that up with a unanimous decision win over Darko Stosic. In his next fight, he would finish Cleetson Abro. But this fight would be overturned to a no contest due to Hill failing a drug test for marijuana. He would bounce back with the standing TKO against light heavyweight staple Ovince St. Pru. And next, he would suffer his first and only loss when he would be TKO'd by Paul Craig when he would get his elbow dislocated. This loss really changed them all and he would hit another level. He would bounce back with a huge knockout finish over fellow prospect Jimmy Crew, where he would floor him with a huge right hook. Then. He would get a viral highlight knockout against Johnny Walker when he would land a huge overhand right that would shut the lights off on Johnny Walker. He would show his toughness when he faced Diago Santos. He went toe to toe and had to dig deep where he would eventually find the TKO finish in the fourth round. After a disappointing draw between Ankalaev and Wojovic where the title would remain vacant, Hill and Teixeira would be matched up with the gold up for grabs. Hill would batter Glover, hitting him with everything he had to offer and he would become the new light heavyweight champion of the world. But the high would be short lived as Jamal Hill would announce on his YouTube channel that he tore his Achilles and would vacate the title as he recovered. In his absence, Alex has captured the belt but to Jamal, he never truly lost it and still has claim to the throne. Two heavy hitting strikers collide with the biggest prize at stake. Will Alex be able to legitimize his status as the one true king of light heavyweight? Or will Jamal Hill reclaim what he never lost and make it sweet dreams for Pereira? Don't miss out. In the co-main event, we get a Chinese MMA showcase when Magnum Zhang Wei Li defends her strawweight title against the number one contender, Nan Yan Xionan. Wei Li is arguably the best female fighter in the UFC. She is 24-3 as a pro and has gone 8-2 in the UFC so far. She has been on fire since she joined. She made her UFC debut against Danielle Taylor where she would win via unanimous decision. She would get her first finish in the UFC in her next fight where she would lock in a first round armbar submission against Jessica Aguilar. She would follow that up with a unanimous decision against the tiny tornado Tisha Torres that would earn her a shot at the title. She would step up as the challenger against Jessica Andrade. She would fight in her home country with all eyes on her. She would deliver big time. She would hurt and finish Andrade with a series of punches and knees in the first round and become the new strawweight champion of the world. She would solidify her championship status in her first defense when she would win a split decision over Joanna Janjacek. And this fight was one of the best fights I've ever seen. It was non-stop action against two of the most talented females we have ever seen. Zhang Wei Li's reign will lead her to Thug Rose Nama Yunus where in her second title defense she would be knocked out in the first round losing her title in the process. 
this fight really sucked for her but it was also something that she needed because she made so many improvements to her game and she reached a new level she would get the rematch with rose and this fight would be way closer it was obvious that whaley improved everywhere but her grappling definitely reached new heights it was highly contested but she would lose a split decision she would get set up to fight Joanna Janjacek once again. This time, she would not let it be a close fight as she would land a spinning back fist in the second round that would floor Joanna and end the fight. Her exciting fight style has always kept her near the top of the division and once Carla Sparza dethroned Rose Namajunas, she would be next in line. She would enter as a huge favorite and the odd makers were on the nose as she would lock in a rear naked choke in the second round as she would capture gold once again and she would defend her belt against the heavy hitting Brazilian Amanda Limos. She would showcase all her skills in this fight as she would dominate Limos throughout all five rounds to earn a unanimous decision. During her rise and resurgence, another Chinese prospect was on the rise as well. Yan Xionan is 17 and three with one no contest and is eight and two in the UFC. She started her UFC run with a six fight win streak. That streak had wins over Kaylin Curran, Viviani Pereira, Siori Kondo, Angela Hill, Karina Kowalkowicz, and Claudia Gadelha. She would lose two in a row when she would get finished by Carla Sparza, and then she would drop a split decision to Marina Rodriguez. It would be a temporary bump in the road as she would bounce back with a majority decision win over Mackenzie Dern. Then, in her most recent fight, she would get her biggest win yet when she would knock out Jessica Andrade in the first round. She landed a huge counter right that floored Andrade. And this would be enough to earn her a shot at the title. Both women are well rounded and are not afraid of getting into a brawl. This fight is going to be a great one. And with the title on the line, we can expect the best from both of them. Will Yan Chanan be able to defeat her fellow countrywoman to capture championship gold? Or will Magnum Zhang Wei Li prove that when it comes to MMA, she is a different caliber? Don't miss out. At UFC 300, two of the baddest in the game go head to head when Justin the Highlight Gaethje defends the BMF title against the former featherweight champion Max Blessed Holloway. Both these guys are savages and this fight is one you cannot miss. Justin Gaethje has been one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC ever since he arrived. He made his UFC debut against Michael Johnson and this fight would reflect the type of fights we would get from him. He would get cracked early and it looked like the end was near but he showed off his toughness and durability to survive and turn the tables as he would finish Michael in the second round. He would get fed to the wolves in his next two fights as he would lose by knockout in back to back fights to the underground king Eddie Alvarez and to Dustin the Diamond Poirier. He would bounce back by winning four straight fights all by impressive fashion. He would make James Vick eat his words when he would land a huge hook in the first round that would put Vick to sleep. Next, he would knock out Edson Barboza with a huge right hook as he was trying to circle out. He would follow that up with a clinical breakdown of Donald Cerrone where he would finish him within the first round. Then, he would deliver a devastating beatdown of Tony Ferguson where he would batter him until the fight was stopped. This impressive run would earn him a shot at the title and he would challenge for the lightweight title against Khabib Nurmagomedov and he would have a few good moments but he would be outmatched in the grappling and he would get caught in a triangle choke that would put him asleep in the second round. He would bounce back with an electrifying performance against Michael Chandler where he would hold his ground and win a unanimous decision. He would challenge once again this time against Charles Oliveira. He would hurt Charles early but he would get dropped with a huge shot and then he would be submitted via rear naked choke. He would get matched up with a rising contender when he would face Rafael Fiziev. Fiziev was on fire leading up to this fight and the odds were in his favor too but Justin would show that he is still an elite lightweight as he would win a majority decision. With Jorge Masvidal retiring the BMF belt would be vacated and the two obvious choices were Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier and that's what the UFC went with. The first fight was a fight for the ages as they would both land huge shots but Dustin would finish Justin. Things were very different this time around as Justin would land a huge head kick that finished the fight. The BMF belt has never been defended and Gaethje has the chance to make history against Max. Max Holloway is a former featherweight champion who will go up to 155 to challenge for the BMF title. At 145 he has some fantastic wins over Cub Swanson, Charles Oliveira, Jeremy Stevens, Ricardo Lamas, Anthony Pettis, Jose Aldo, Brian Ortega, Frankie Edgar, Calvin Cater, Yair Rodriguez, 
Arnold Allen, and the Korean Zombie. He has fought everyone at 145, beating everyone not named Volkanovski, and he has gone up before stepping in on short notice to fight Dustin Poirier for the interim lightweight title. That time, he would fall short, losing a unanimous decision, but this time, he has time to adapt to the weight and should fare much better this time around. It always surprises me that Max is only 32 years old. He has already cemented himself in history, but still has so much of his prime left. Max doesn't focus on landing hard, but landing consistently. He is at his best when he is landing his combinations. Both of these guys come to mind when you think of BMFs. Both these guys will be ready to throw down. Will Justin be the one to break the unbreakable and add Max to the highlight? Or will the Bless Express run through Gaethje to become the new BMF? Don't miss out. We get a nasty matchup when the former lightweight champion Charles Dubronx Oliveira takes on the surging prospect Armin Ahalkalakit Sarukian. This fight is a banger as the challenger looks to do what others couldn't to get past the top lightweights to get to the title. Armand is 21-3 and, and is 8-2 and two in the UFC. His UFC debut was on extra hard mode as he would be welcomed to the UFC by Islam Mahachev where he would lose via unanimous decision. He would go on an impressive 5-5 win streak with great wins over Olivier Albin Mercier, Davi Ramos, Matt Frivola, a knockout finish over Christos Diagos, and a bloody finish over Joel Alvarez. He would hit a bump in the road when he would drop a super close decision to Mateusz Gamrot. He would bounce back with a three fight win streak. He would dominate the Mirrors Magulov to win a unanimous decision. He would overcome adversity early as he would TKO Joaquim Silva late in the third round. In his latest fight, he would make a huge statement when he would knock out Benil Dariush out cold in the first round. This impressive finish would be enough to get him a matchup with the number one ranked lightweight Charles Oliveira. Du Bronx is 34 and 9 with one no contest, and he has grown up in the UFC. He is 22 and 9 in the UFC, and he started his career at featherweight, but he would find some momentum once he moved up to lightweight. He has great wins over Clay Guida, Christos Giagos, David Tamor, Nick Lentz, Jared Gordon, Kevin Lee, a unanimous decision over Tony Ferguson, a knockout win over Michael Chandler, a rear naked choke win over Dustin Poirier. Another rear naked choke over Justin Gaethje. And in his most recent fight, he would stop Benil Dariush in the first round via strikes. He is such an electric fighter. He holds the record for most finishes ever in the UFC with 20. Only two of his UFC wins have gone to decision. And this guy is dangerous everywhere. He is always moving forward and his striking is reckless because he is not afraid of getting taken down because his ground game is also dangerous. He will have to use his striking advantage to crack Armand early because Armand might be able to hang with him on the ground. It's going to be non-stop action and this is also a can't miss fight. Will Sarukian be able to get through Oliveira and get to the title shot or will Du Bronx get another finish and prove he is still an elite lightweight? Don't miss out. Opening up the main card up and coming Bo Nickel tries to make himself a household name when he takes on Cody Brundage. There has been so much hype behind Bo Nickel and whether you think he deserves a spot on the main card over some other guys, he has the potential to break out right here. Bo Nickel made his name in the wrestling world where he would dominate for Penn State. He made his transition to MMA back in 2022 where he would finish John Nolan via first round finish. He would immediately be given a shot on the contender series where he would be put in a unique situation where he would have to win twice on the show before being given a contract. He would get a first round submission via rear naked choke win over Zach Borrego and the first round triangle choke over Donovan Beard. His highly anticipated UFC debut would be against Jamie Pickett. He would get another submission win as he would lock in an arm triangle choke. But it would not come without controversy as he landed a low blow that kind of helped him get the takedown. He has shown how good his grappling is and how he's been able to find submission finishes. But in his most recent fight, no takedown was necessary as he would show off his hands. In his latest fight, he would knock out Val Woodburn in the first round. Showing that his striking game is developing and that he's not a one trick pony. There is a lot of criticism on the skill level of his opponent so far, but it's obvious that he is still very green. At 28 years old, he is only 5-0. He has a bunch of confidence and I think that rubs some people the wrong way because he hasn't really fought any top guys. But he has a chance to get more experience when he faces Cody Brundage. Cody has had a rough time in the UFC so far. He has gone 4-4. Four four. He does have some solid wins. He has a guillotine choke win over Dolce Lungiambula, a knockout win over tough finalist Trayshawn Gore, and a highlight slam knockout over Zach Reese. 
His losses have been pretty bad though. He has decision losses to Nick Maximov and Sandrik Dumas, a submission loss to Rodolfo Vieira, and a knockout loss to McCall Olajacek. He isn't the top caliber fighter that many wanted Bo to face, but I think it's a good next step. Will Bo Nickel take the next step to become a serious contender, or will Cody Brundage play spoiler and ruin his plans? Don't miss out. Alright guys, that was my rundown of the main card of UFC 300. Every fight on this card is a must watch fight. And here's a quick rundown of all the other fights. Former light heavyweight champion Yuri Prohaska takes on the renewed Alexander Rocket Rockich in the main feature prelim. Calvin Cater welcomes former bantamweight champion Aljamain Funkmaster Sterling to the featherweight division. The Preacher's daughter Holly Holm welcomes Kayla Harrison to the UFC. And Super Sadiq Youssef tries to stop the momentum of fan favorite Diego Lopez. The Tarantula Jalen Turner takes on Hinato Money Moicano. The heavy hitting Jessica Andra takes on the tall and rangy Marina Rodriguez. Slick striker Bobby King Green takes on the grizzly veteran Jim fucking Miller. Opening up the entire car, Davison Figueredo continues his bantamweight journey when he takes on the former bantamweight champion Cody No Love Garbrandt. This card is absolutely stacked. It just can't be understated. Do not miss a single fight. This is going to be a great, great night. It's going to be a great night of fights. Don't forget to tune in. I'll see you in two weeks for UFC Fight Night Nicolau versus Perez. But until then, protect your neck and take care. Now they talking crazy about you. They said they brother, brother, smash. Who cares? Who cares, brother? Who cares, brother? Who cares? Today, 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 smash.